So this is just a little sort of opener question for everybody. And it should be appearing on your smartphone. Um, and it basically says, which brick speaks to you? So just pick one which you think is speaking to you right now. And then I will pull up the result to see where we all stand. Okay, and you can see people are putting their inputs in. A um, couple of bricks there. Uh, we've got a couple of plants doing super well. Um, but the red window is charging ahead as well. Um, and of course, our little vehicle with the wheels is, is coming along as well. So just a little, little exercise to say to you guys, you know, even uh, something as simple as a brick can actually connote uh, some thoughts and feelings, can even give you a sense of how you're feeling right now. Um, and just again, just to sort of practice this using of Mentimeter, um, I thought we would then ask you one more question with re relation to these bricks. Um, and it is, what is it saying to you? So I, in a, in a perfect world, I could ask about all nine or so of these bricks, but we don't have time. So I'm going to just pull up one. What is the red window saying? And a word cloud of inputs, I can see lots of things coming through. Opportunity seems big. Perspective, openness, um, window to the world, and so forth and so forth. And you can see as more um, inputs are coming in, that, that word cloud is getting a bit crazy there. But basically, I think uh, the message I have for you is that something as simple as a Lego brick can actually have meaning, right? And obviously a window has a lot of um, metaphorical elements to it. And of course, later when we do the Lego series play session, you'll see that these bricks actually do have meaning. They, they provoke certain thoughts in people. Um, and we're really just tapping into that for our serious play session. So where I'm coming from is really this idea that innovation and the way in which we sort of find new opportunities has changed radically over the last sort of 10 years or so. And maybe even the sort of things have sort of come undone a little bit. And we're having to include lots more people in the conversation about what opportunities we want to go after and what, what those specific things might be. Um, and it really has required a little bit of a rethink in terms of how we work and how we discover new opportunities for our company to, to innovate. There's really just a very simple way of looking at things, which is to say, if you think about how we normally work and the world of work as we know it, it's very efficiency driven. And what I mean here is we very task oriented. We've, be, we've sort of optimized work so that we can get lots of things done in a short period of time. Um, and it's very good at exploiting opportunities that have already been discovered. And so, you know, a business model has been set up. We have figured out who our customer is, our product, and we're now exploiting that. Um, and that's really how most work has been organized. The problem is, is that we need to look for new opportunities. This requires a different kind of focus. And this is really where we want more work that's around emergence. And emergence is really about exploring and saying what can be. You know, what is, what is, what is missing in our customer's life or what is the opportunity in our category? Um, and emergent work really requires a little bit more of sort of meandering, exploring, um, opening up the imagination. And it doesn't work in the same way as efficiency work. Um, it's hard to marshal it and say, arrive now, we have 30 minutes and now we need our next big idea. Um, it needs a little bit more time and space and the right conditions need to be set for, um, for this work to happen. And so what, this is where we feel play has a huge opportunity that we can put people in a more creative, innovative mode. And serious play is one way in which we can really bring out the imagination. Uh, and so this is our focus and our interest today. So just to give you a little definition of what this is, because I see a lot of you are not familiar with the term. Um, in fact, it, it was born around 1995. And in fact, Lego were one of the early uh, originators of the term. Essentially what it means is you create a playful environment so that new ideas um, and, new, and new things can emerge. And so it's really creating that space where people 
feel like they're having a playful time. They don't feel like they're doing heavy strategic or innovation work. Um, and it really allows things that normally would be inaccessible to, to emerge. So Lego Series Play being the, probably the most uh, popular and, and certainly the leading edge methodology, Darwin and myself both are Lego Series Play facilitators. And effectively what this is, it's taking the Lego that we're all familiar with that we might have played with as kids and bringing it into the boardroom, bringing it into the meeting room. Uh, Lego really pursued this because they felt at the time in the mid nineties, Lego wasn't actually doing so well. Um, that their managers lacked imagination, that they weren't being uh, creative in their solutions. Um, and the thinking was, how can we bring this thing that fires up the creativity of kids and, and bring it to the world of adults? So how Lego Series Play actually works is we, we give a question and then we ask the participants to build a model in response to that question. After that, there is some storytelling that happens about what have you built, and then some reflection that happens. So um, in terms of the actual process, it takes several hours, um, maybe as short as two or three, but often the workshops that Darwin and myself run might be sort of more like a day or a day and a half and, and even two days, depending on how complex the topic is. So what we're gonna share with you today is very much a simulation of that process. Um, it's really to give you a flavor. Um, and of course, being virtually, adds another dimension to the whole process because, you know, when you walk into a room full of bricks, people's energy changes, you know, they, they, they light up, they become sort of kids again. They know they're there to play. And so in a way we get, we get a huge helping hand as facilitators when people walk into a room and go, ha ah, Lego. Um, but of course in a virtual world, it is possible to build. Um, and, and there are a couple of hacks and workarounds that we use. Um, but um, obviously a slightly different uh, experience. Basically, Lego is used for any kind of communication or problem solving. So where you want people to think about an issue deeply, you want them to lean in and contribute, and really it unlocks knowledge that's sitting latent in people's brains. Okay, so you hopefully a little bit later, you're going to see exactly how, how that works. In terms of where Lego Series Play has its most benefit, um, if you think of the design thinking process, sort of following these stages of starting off with an understanding of the customer or the empathizing stage, then sort of synthesizing that into some problem understanding or problem reframe, then jumping into where can we go with this? What's the new opportunity? What's the idea? And then trying to uh, experiment around how to manifest that idea into prototype and then obviously to put that in front of customers and test. So there's uh, maybe most of you are familiar with sort of that, the, the five step process or thereabouts. Um, essentially, it, there is an emergence phase, which is at the beginning, which is sort of like trying to understand what's going on and what can be. And then later on, there's an exploitation phase. And, and certainly Lego series play is very strong in the front end of that process. So where you're trying to understand the customer, trying to understand what challenge or problem we should uh, tackle, and even generating ideas. Lego Series Play is very, very strong. Uh, I've never used it on the prototyping and validation side, and I'm sure maybe some people have. If you're simply using it for communication, it definitely would have some value there. But we say at the front end, at the more confusing end, um, Lego Series Play probably has the greatest impact. Okay, is if you could have your Lego arranged like this, somewhere in front of your computer in front of you. And then if you can, for the building section, it will help the observers. If you angle your webcam down um, and we can see your Lego on the table in front of you. Okay, so we are ready to go to breakout rooms. We're gonna be there for 20 minutes. Audrey's gonna send us there. Um, we've already been assigned, and I shall see you in the breakouts. Um, okay, so we have some Lego players. I can see we've got Norlisa, uh, Penny. Can you rename yourself for us? Um, we've got, is it Ida, Damien, um, and Natasha, Esther, Barath. Hi, Barath. 
Um, <laughs> I, I, Bart didn't get his Lego set, so we quickly met up yesterday and, and passed it um, to each other. Okay, so we're going to get going, guys. It's about a 20-minute session. Um, and just as to start, and I'm going to angle my camera as well, um, is so that you can see what's going on here. Okay, okay, cool. Okay, guys, so here's the first thing I want for all my Lego players, okay, is I'm going to ask you to build something, and it's going to be super quick. It's going to be 60 seconds that you have to build. And basically, I'm going to ask you, can you please build me a tower with six bricks? Off you go. Okay, stop. All right, so that's time's up, guys. So that was 60 seconds. I know it went by very quickly. Um, and so now you have built your tower and it's sitting on the table in front of you. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna call on each of the Lego participants um, and ask you to just say something about what you've built um, you know, just a few seconds and maybe I'll just kick it off to kind of show you guys how it goes. Um, for this one, I would say, um, guys, you can put yourself on speaker view so that we can really hear oh, um, the person talking and we can see nice and big. And I'm going to ask you to hold your model up so that everyone can see it. Okay. So this is just my tower. I don't know why I'm feeling in sort of a bit of a pink mood today. Um, so I've put this sort of flower on the top. You can see it there. Um, I've got some pink bricks here. And I feel like this is, I'm going to call it a tower of love. So this tower is like sending good vibes to everybody. Okay. So that's how it goes. Um, I'm going to ask, can I call on Natasha? If you can uh, make sure you're on speaker view, Natasha. Okay, I think you should be able to hear me. There we can see. Yes, 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 we can hear. Okay. So, hi, I'm just Morning. struggling with my camera. But this is my um, tower. And it was very quick and 60 seconds. Um, but actually, what it, it's green and actually it's a really solid foundation. That sort of, it's strong. It's not going to crumble, and it's there, and then it's sort of growing from, from that. So, nice. Cool. That now, keep that tower. Don't break it down. We're going to use it a little bit later, Natasha. Okay. All right. So I'm going to call on Barath. Tell us, um, let's see your tower. So um, this is my green and yellow tower. Um, I did not intend it to be color coded, but it started just becoming a particular color pattern. I built the base and then I knew that I needed something aerodynamic come to the top. Um, and then I just found pieces in between. So I kind of made a sandwich. Nice. Cool. I love it. Awesome. Good job. You have done well on graduating. How about Marceline? Where are you? Hi, uh, this is my tower. I had wanted it to have a solid base, um, but yet have a, you know, a colorful, vibrant kind of, you know, top at the top of the tower. Um, mm. and, in, <laughs> and in between, maybe just, you know, something that was fairly vibrant and cheerful. So the yellow colors. Nice. Cool. Thanks, Marcy. <laughs> How about Noliza? 
Hi. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm struggling with my camera. <laughs> um, okay, That's so good. That's good. Off, started off picking up um, bricks that are very thick so that the tower will build up to its height. Um, but somehow I ended up picking up very happy colours. So <laughs> probably this colour stand out to me right now. And uh, the shape looks a bit like a sword. Probably uh, mm, some influence from my gaming <laughs> experience that I've been doing a lot of sword fighting. Yeah. So it ended up oh. looking like this. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Very good. I'm going to ask, um, is it Penny? Penny is playing. Is, do we have Penny here or am I... Seeing things. I am okay. seeing things, sorry. Yes, Penny's there, sorry. Okay, yeah, this is my towel. Mm -hmm. You can see. Uh, I tried to build something that is a bit uh, stick. And uh, I always wanted a rooftop garden, so I put a little plant on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, over here. Yes, oh, well, that's all. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Paul, how about you? Hi, yeah, this is my tower. Uh, it looks like a mountain, and I was just my intention was just to go as high as possible, so therefore the stick at the end, and that's all I was thinking. Lovely. Okay. Um, did we hear from Damien? <clears throat> Hi. So actually, this is my tower. I there's not much thought going into it. It's just you know picking up the bricks. Uh, I'm just trying to complete within uh, sixty seconds. I just thought you know the logical way is start with a broader base and then taper up to the top. With a special, so kind of a ladder sort of thing. Yeah. That's it. You got it. Awesome. Um, Who have I missed on the Lego? Is it Esther? Do you want to share your tower class? Yeah, sure. Okay, so this is my tower. It's Friday, so it's Tower of Happiness. <laughs> All the bright <laughs> colors. Yeah, and it's got a little uh, flag on top. Um, nice. Yeah, to kind of cool. express that happiness and, you know, that, that freedom. So that's my tower. Ooh. Awesome. Okay. Who did I miss? Is it Ida? Uh, yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Like uh, I just read on the news that, you know, the Singapore government is encouraging everyone to go out to explore Singapore. Right. So I got kind of like uh, influenced by it um, to build something that is like a, uh, like a Singapore landscape, like MBS. Uh, though it's it doesn't really look like one, but uh, in my imagination, it is kind of like an MBS um, structure. Uh, and I added this green thingy here, like uh, to signify that it's a flag, uh, because uh, the day is around the corner. Oops. Yeah, true. Okay, so did we get everyone to tell a little story around their build that was playing? I think that should be everyone. So that's just the first step in Lego series play is really sort of getting comfortable with putting a couple of bricks together. And of course, not everyone's familiar with Lego. Most people are, but not everyone is. And being able to put them together and to create something and then to tell a little bit of a story around it is really sort of one of the core principles of Lego series play. Um, and you've done that magnificently. You all have graduated on our first level of skills building. Okay, so now we're going to use this tower and take it a little bit further. And this is really sort of the, the heart of the question, if you like, which we're going to present to you. And basically, I'm going to ask you to just think about how in the past sort of four months, five months or so, we have found ourselves in obviously a very unique and different situation with, uh, with COVID-19 and social distancing. And if like me, I, like many of you maybe have uh, had to buy things online, uh, myself, I, my washing machine broke down in the middle of circuit breaker and that was not a pleasant experience. And so for the first time in my life, I had to navigate the buying of a home appliance online. Um, not something I'd normally do, books, um, other products, maybe electronics, but certainly I, I would not have tried to buy a washing machine online. So I want you to think about maybe you did do some online shopping in the local arena, maybe restaurants, cafes, and then obviously retail, you may have had to buy things because shops were closed. Um, so I want you to think about buying online, think about that experience. And I want you to take your tower and I want you to adapt it in some way. So you can add bricks, you can take some bricks away. And I want you to tell me about what kind of experience you want when you are shopping online locally. So what kind of, what, do you, what is it you want? 
when you shop online locally. And so I'm going to give you guys about 90 seconds for that. So it's going to be super quick. Off you go. Okay, so that should be about time for everyone. I know it's quite quick and that's the whole thing with Lego Series Play is we don't give people too much time to think about things. We always say, don't have a meeting with yourself. Um, <laughs> and so you're kind of wanting to be spontaneous. Sometimes you don't know what you're building. And we say, let the bricks, they know. And so you just start putting a couple bricks together and before you know it. Um, something emerges. Okay, so we're going to go through the same thing again. I'm going to ask you to bring, uh, hold your model up to the camera and tell us a little bit about what this means in terms of online shopping for you. So um, can we start again? Uh, maybe we go with Natasha. Hi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Show us your model. So the, the first thing that, I, that came to my mind was just the idea of a human, the human touch or human experience. Yeah. Um, yes. even if it's chatbots that now talk to us all the time online, just the way that it's personalized. So I think yeah. I was really just thinking about the human connection, which is why I stuck a human on it. Fantastic. That's beautiful. I'm taking notes here and we're going to put it um, on the, on the mirror board later. And next up, can we get Marceline? Marcy, are you good to show us your model? Uh, yeah, I actually kept the beacon thing in a way, I mean a tower thing, because I thought that maybe for online shopping it could be a little bit of like a beacon in a way. But I changed out the colours, instead of it just being vibrant, I wanted it to be a bit more understanding. <laughs> so just because of the nice. greens and yellows. Um, and then also uh, maybe with, you know, with these little things coming out in that sense so that it actually has some kind of outreach as well. Nice, thanks for that. Okay, so who else wants to go? Esther, tell us what you've built there in re relation to online shopping. Yeah, I was trying to take a photo, but um, yeah, okay, so this is my um, how happiness changed to an uh, experience of happiness. Uh, ah. So it looks like uh, a person because, yeah, the, the user must be at the center of everything. Um, so so it's, it's a human uh, with a happy looking flag. Because uh, the experience should in itself be a very pleasant one. Uh, it'd be even better if, you know, the uh, seller can throw in some freebie, some thrills to make it very extraordinary for the person. And uh, online, it should be quick, it should be fast. So, and this is represented by the mix. Nice. Fast, <laughs> of course. We all want our stuff yesterday. Okay, cool. Next up, who's next? I'm very mindful that we've only got five minutes to go. Um... Who, uh, Penny, you want to share your model? Okay, um, this is my model. I ad actually added flowers, a flower now besides my plant and a human. Being that yeah. uh, for online shopping, you would like to have a pleasant experience and it should be more human focused and yeah. um, it, it should give the customer a sense of security as well as the joy of shopping. So that's why I put, it, I, I put the human figure right on top. 
Nice. Thank you. Okay. Who hasn't gone? Can we get the next next person up straight away? Yeah, please yeah. do. Who's this? Uh, this Ra. Paul. Yeah. Paul. Cool. So uh, I I'm arranging my pieces in, 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 in categories of colors and I'm I know shopping is always problematic when you are just trying to recall what is that item, the name of the item. So I'm thinking, can we just call uh, things by its function? Like, oh, I like to search for communication de uh, communication devices, or and also I have uh, colors that are overlapping. So some devices can do dual, triple function. So I mm. I just like to see it in that way where you just color coding, categorizing. So it's easy to say, uh, is it a washing machine? Let's just say you know, give it a name. It's a, a, a dream weaver or something like that. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. Thank. I know. I also find the search functions. I sometimes I don't even know what the thing's called and um, and, and sort of get tied up there. Uh, Barath, how about you? Show us what you've built. Sure. So I have the tower with uh, with a little bit of like a transparent uh, lookout window when, the, when it was a tower and that kind of yeah. inspired me to think of the, the many times when we try to order something and we just see a two, two dimensional picture of it, which really doesn't capture. So even if you're ordering food, it'd be nice to see like a 3D, like uh, object or an image of it, which you could maybe view through a window and then and kind of look around and see if that's really what you want mm. in, your, in the dimension. Cool. Like nice. It. Like nice one. Okay. How about who's who's up? Who else we got? We got a few more folks, right? Yes. So, Who's uh, this? Ada here. So, Ada, hi. Yeah. So I thought that, you know, online experience is almost like an, uh, the norm now, right? So the only thing that I um, thought that it, it could be lacking is the human touch, like most of us has mentioned. Um, so definitely I thought that, you know, there's, there should be some human behind. A, the online experience and uh, something about uh, worth pondering it's about this um, you know the the census part like um, um, yeah some innovation there you know like we can actually smell what we buy <laughs> mm, like that oh that would be cool right good who else has not gone hi I think it's me um, mm. okay so mine I basically built on top and below the tower, um, yeah. this features here, the branches, um, kind of the experience when you shop online, when you want to buy something, but you branch out and ended up buying more things that yeah. may be related or not. Um, and I have like a little green flower on top because uh, it's a reminder when we shop online to be um, conscious and right. um, responsible. Yeah. Right. Cool. Thank you. Good screen grabbing. Done. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm going to upload that onto our Miro board um, and we'll see you a bit later in the main session. Okay. Question around when you are doing um, online shopping, particularly in a local retail sense, what is it that you want from that experience? And Darwin, maybe I'll just share a little bit that came from, um, from my guys. Mm -hmm. um, we had a lot of uh, mentions around the human connection, um, looking for a happy experience, the joy of shopping. Um, maybe I could call on, can I call on uh, Norlisa? Are you still there? Hi. Show everybody your model, Norlisa. Tell them what, what, what you built. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's just tell us what you built and what does it mean in, in, the, in the context of online shopping? Um, I was looking more at um, a micro experience for myself. So uh, it has, it, it started off with our tower, but it has these branches on top because um, my online shopping experience is that I'm normally focused to buy one thing, but I branch out to buy many mm -hmm. other unrelated things. But I did mm -hmm. um, try to make myself a bit more responsible and look for um, environmentally friendly things, uh, green things. So I added a little plant right on top. Done. Good. So look, that was a very quick process, guys. Um, yeah. It was like, you know, rapid fire um, Lego series play. <laughs> just, to, just to wrap up on Lego series play, what makes it powerful is that it gets knowledge out of people. So it's latent in people's brains, maybe not even so conscious. 
Um, but the BRICS provoke and we, we, we sort of um, are able to elicit a response, particularly because we're dealing with metaphor. Um, also, language is so ambiguous and sometimes verbally it's hard to explain what's going on in the company or complex system. And so the, the visual can be very powerful. Um, and it's very memorable. You know, someone can present a model and even weeks later you remember what that meant and who said it and why. So that's, that's very, very powerful as well. Okay. This is what a session looks like. You know, it's normally a bit more intimate. We, we like one facilitator to 10 people, um, but you can obviously have bigger groups and more facilitators. Uh, we pick the bricks, we build our models. Sometimes we write post-its um, and we create sometimes a shared model. We, we, we try to have a common understanding of what everyone feels or thinks about a particular topic. This was one I did and I've done several for LVMH here in Asia Pacific. I think the thing about workshops, we know people have got their smart devices, they've got multiple things going on in their minds and multitasking. And I think the thing about serious play is you really cannot multitask. You know, when you're playing Lego and you're building with these bricks, quite frankly, it's the only thing that you're doing. And I think for me, it's one of the big benefits besides the fact, obviously, that you get breakthrough thinking and people are able to unlock new knowledge. For me, the big thing is that people are present they lean in, they really co-create and contribute, and there's nothing else that's really going on in their world. So for me, that's the big, big, big difference.